Well, the guy from Every has just arrived and uh, explained, Hi, oh, there's the box, Paul, it's Guy Fecht. <laughs> or words to that effect. So, yes, the box was open. Um, but everything seems to be in there. So, that's my brake pads. Doesn't say Kia Seed on there, but well, I can only hope that that's the case. So, fits Kia Seed. It says Pro at the end. So that's how much I paid for that. Forty-one ninety-nine. And it does say Napa Great Discs. So, let's have a look and see what they look like. So, that's the pads out of the box. I'm not 100% sure if they're the same shape. They certainly feel very rough. I don't know if that's uh, centered metal or whatever, but yeah, they feel uh, well. You can see the colour, but yeah, they're quite. Uh, they feel more like a sharpened stone, I would say. But anyway, that's that. So let's have a look at the discs. Well, that's one of the discs. Are uh, definitely covered in something grease or whatever. But uh, they look like they're the right discs. I'll find out tomorrow because it's too late to start uh, working on the discs today. So uh, that was four o'clock on Monday afternoon they arrived. So tomorrow, Tuesday morning, hopefully it's going to be dry. I'll get these fitted. It's a lovely cold, damp day here. Two degrees above freezing. Just get my stuff looped out for the break. Oh, that'll teach me to not look where I'm going. Um, whacking my head off the tailgate. So I've got my two uh, discs here and the pads, and I'm just going to get the car jacked up. Um, get the wheel off and start disassembling this one hopefully it's not going to be too drastic but no doubt there'll be a few issues along the way so that's today's task swap the discs and the pads uh, clean up the caliper slide or guide pins reassemble uh, probably have to adjust the handbrake and uh, take it from there so that's my day. Hope you're having a better day than me. Well, this tool is something that I wouldn't have thought you really needed. But, it's actually really handy. I'm on the lowest setting, so I need to put it up to 400. But, amazing how much time this saves you. It was... Uh, £59 odd about two years ago or something. Been really good. I was always old school, just used the wheel brace. But I would definitely recommend <clears throat> if you can get one of those impact wrenches. Saves you a lot of time, unless you have it on the wrong torque setting. And in the interests of science, I've now got it on 400. One, not very good doing this one handed, but anyway, you see the point, takes it off very quickly and very easily. That's the wheel nuts removed. You'll remember last week I put some grease on it, that 
absolutely no problem at all. So, for safety, I always slide the wheel under the sill, just in case something falls. And then I'll see about positioning this uh, axle stand somewhere. One of the things that I have to do is I have to remove this cross brace. Now, some people say you can actually get a deep dish or S or offset spanner in there to undo the bolt <coughs> for the pad carrier. But I just think it's easier to take that out. That can be quite seized up, that bolt and I've not removed it for probably three years so it's not looking fantastic but well we'll see how that goes so that's going to be my first job just to take that off obviously uh, these will come out easy enough because they've been greased up recently but I'm going to take that bolt out first Well, <clears throat> that's that. Uh, that's that undone. Now it does look pretty crusty and horrible, but uh, I have had copper slip grease on there for the whole time that I've had the car, pretty much. So that did come out. So it's a 16 mil there, and on this side it's a 17. Now that came off just with a small, small socket wrench. And I just had that at the top of the, the spring mount, but uh, that wasn't a big deal. But if you've never done this before and you live somewhere where they use salt on the roads, be prepared to be somewhat frustrated with this. Now, I will put that back on and I'll be tapping it out that way through this side um, with a hammer just to make sure it's loose. But uh, it was actually turning the whole bolt because uh, when I first did this, I didn't have this spanner on here. Uh, as I say, it's a 17 and it was turning. So that should come out okay. But if you're doing this job <coughs> to get access to take the pad carrier off, just make sure that uh, you grease that bolt up because it will, it will seize in place and it'll be very difficult to get out. But if you live in an area where they don't use salt in the roads or you don't have bad winters, you might be okay. Well, that's the bolt. So you've got, as I say, 16 mil here and 17 on this end. That's very, very dry, but that did have um, grease put on it before it was inserted the last time I took the change the discs which I think was about three years ago. <clears throat> might have been during lockdown. So, yeah. In fact, it might be four years ago now. I think it was May 2020. Um, so, I would highly recommend that you grease this up nicely. Uh, whether you use copper, copper grease, or <coughs> I've got multi-purpose grease. And then I've also got... Uh, lithium based grease but yeah certainly put plenty on that I will actually clean up that nut as well uh, got a little uh, wire brush I'll clean all that up but anyway back to the uh, caliper so the thing that kind of catches you out with uh, with these Pad carriers normally you just take them off, it's quite straightforward, but this brace here is held in by that bolt. Now, some people say you can get in there to get to that bolt which holds the pad carrier on, which you need to remove in order to take off the disc. But I think that's going to be <laughs> a bit fiddly. I mean, I'm sure you can do it if you had to do it, if you had a deep dish socket uh, spanner. But I would rather just remove this cross brace, take it out, and then get the uh, the bolt out. And then you're not farting about. But that's me. Um, it's amazing how much crap ends up collecting on these uh, nuts and bolts. Certainly up here. 
But anyway, <clears throat> so next thing is I'm going to see about taking off the caliper. I know I've got a problem with this. This is uh, seized up. So I'm going to have to get a spanner on here and see if I can break this free. I know I had a problem doing it the other day, but today's the, the, the day. You can see how that's uh, letting all sorts of crap in there. That bellows <coughs> just there for show purposes. It's not stopping any water and crap getting in there, and that's why that's been a problem. This one's okay, but I'm going to properly clean up the pad carrier as well, uh, and hopefully improve the performance overall. Well, that's the caliper removed. Uh, that's the two bolts. Um, this is going to have to come off, so you can see that's not sliding anywhere near. There's quite a lot of force I'm using there. So, I'll clean up these surfaces with a wire brush. I've pushed the, uh, the piston back in. I will give that a bit of a clean up and I'll re-grease it. Um, so, as uh, was pointed out in the last video, you know, don't hang this by the, uh, the hose. I will get uh, a bit of wire or a cable, in fact I'll get a cable tie and I'll just cable tie that up out the way so it doesn't fall down on itself but uh, <clears throat> I'll get the wire brush on there quickly just to give that a clean up Well to be fair that, uh, that nut's seen better days but I think that will be something to look out for. I mean, that's just a soft brass brush. It's not, it's not knackering that, I don't think. But yeah, that that could do with being replaced, I believe. So I'll keep my eye out for one of these next time I'm at the scrapyard. Uh, and then I'll get this cleaned up with just some uh, towel. I've got some blue towel there. I'll just give that a clean up and then I'll grease it up with some uh, copper grease. Well, I've not taken my own advice yet. I've just hooked the caliper onto the uh, that cross member. So I've got the spanner in there, as you can see. It's a 15 mil I've got on there. I don't know if it is a 15 mil. It could just be simply it's very very crusted up with rust. But I've got a 15 mil socket on there, so I've got to take that one off, and then I've got to take this one off so presumably they're the same size of bolts and i'll find out just now if this undoes okay the slide pins that as i say is it's like going through treacle this one's not but it's not brilliant but it's not bad certainly better than the than the leading edge pin so anyway i'll see if this will come out I've got this one started, it's actually a 14mm, it's, uh, it feels very dry, <sighs> fuck, I really wouldn't want to try that, putting a, an offset spanner in there, I think it would be pretty horrific, but again if you live in a Norn, rust belt location it's probably not too bad i double checked this one and this is a 14 so uh i'll get on with this with two hands but uh yeah it's slow going you're kind of limited as well i suppose you could put an extension bar on that and make it easier for yourself but uh there's not much motion anyway so as you can see the socket is a 14 mil So, that's those two bolts. As you can see, they're extremely dry and rusted. <clears throat> Pretty sure they had something on them before. I think that was probably the more troublesome one. But, 
very dry in there. You can see, obviously, that one. Stuff can get in at the back end. Same with that one, actually. So stuff can get in at the back. So I think once I put this up, I'll put some grease over these uh, indents or whatever you call. So that one <coughs> looks like it's solid, but it's just crap. Dirt, dust, road debris build up. So these definitely need cleaned up. Quick wire brush, a bit of copper grease. Um, so that's that. So <clears throat> I'm going to quickly uh, remove these and see what can be done with them. I'll get a drill bit and some uh, towel. Probably just use a bit of this. See about cleaning out the holes uh, where the slide pins go. Uh, but first of all, we'll have a look at the the back disc and if it will come off easily enough. I did think about this before I did it, but you've got two Phillips screws that hold this on. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming I did actually grease this because these are coming out quite easily. Yeah, you can see the copper grease. There's the pal. That's that done. You have to get down on the ground here. Now, the next thing, I'm going to put a glove back on. Uh, you've got to rotate this wheel round to roughly that position, if I recall correctly. So you sort of line that hole there. You see that little adjuster? Be able to see that more clearly once you take this off. You line that up with that one, so it's just off the six o'clock position. So six o'clock's probably here where my finger is, just slightly off. Now, what you need, <coughs> you need a flat bladed screwdriver, and then depending on which way you turn this adjuster, it either tight, it either expands or contracts the shoes. And at this point, that'll be what's holding the disc on, or it should be, hopefully. Same, famous last words. So I will now attempt to slacken the, <coughs> the shoes off and uh, take the disc off. But I'll need two hands for that. Well, that is the disc removed. And it's amazing how much crap has built up in there already. Um, <laughs> really quite amazing how much crap's built up in there. Uh, there's the inner condition of the disc. You can definitely see where it's been scuffing on the inner edge. So that's fine. Now, that bit I managed to press a button there, so let's see. There's a the little adjuster there. So an easy way to get to it is get your flat blade, turn it. Doesn't help if you're on your knees, on your elbow. Turn it sideways, and then as you move the wheel, the sideways will stop at this little wheel there. So you put it sideways and then once you get it sideways then you can adjust it you know up or down like that. So that needs a bloody good clean out in there. It's full of crap. Um, presumably mostly road debris but uh, you could probably snort that up your nose. I don't know if it would do you much good, but yeah, I'll give this a bit of a clean off with a brush, and uh, I mean, look at that, just shows you how much crap gets in there. The, the handbrake is working fine, I'll say that much, but I don't think that's a very good state of affairs. I think uh, 
it's worth cleaning this out maybe on an annual basis or two years at the most. But yeah, <clears throat> doesn't look brilliant, but there is the, this thing here is the operating lever. Sorry, that's the operating lever there, and that can cause quite a few issues. It seizes up. That's what connects to your, your handbrake at the back here. So you pull that, pull the handbrake, it goes that way, and then it expands these teeth out. Um, but I'll have a quick look at that, clean it off with a brush, and uh, maybe spray some brake cleaner or something in there just to make sure it's got most of the crap off. Most of the movement's done up here, so down down at the bottom here is probably not such a big deal. But uh, looks like a spring has come off there of something, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. So anyway, <clears throat> that's the thing off. So you need to do the adjuster if it's not coming off easily. I think this is definitely going to have to get replaced at some point, but that's a job for the summer. Well, I've actually figured out where that spring came from. <clears throat> Somehow, it's come off the adjuster. So I've got a pair of handy needle nose pliers to put it back on. But, you'll see it should clip in there, go over the adjuster, and then it clips into there. So I've got to get the needle nose pliers, put that uh, end there over this part of the bottom of the, the handbrake shoe and it should be fine. But why or how it's done that I'm not entirely sure but I'm going to rectify that now. The handbrake's been working fine so um, strange but anyway it's getting resolved now. Well, that caused a bit of a slight delay getting that uh, spring back onto there. What I did was I got a bit of a strimmer cord, I put it through the loop, I pulled it, because if you try doing it just with this you'll be fighting against yourself. I pulled it and then I used the uh, needle nose pliers to uh, straighten it up and then poke it in. So hopefully that's fine. Um, it's not looking too drastic there, but it could certainly be a bit better than that. So I'll put a bit of grease over it and hope for the best. Well, as I always recommend, whenever you get new parts, put them together, make sure they look the same. Um, yeah, that looks the same. Yeah, very similar profiles. So, old disc. I put a bit of grease over that. Doesn't look very clever, but it'll do for now. <coughs> I've put some uh, copper grease on that surface, which will go against the inner part. <coughs> um, and I've given it a quick blast over with brake cleaner in there. I'll maybe get a bit of... Uh, just looking at those pads. I'll maybe put a little bit of grease over the top of that and I'll just double check that before that spring before I put this on here but uh, hopefully that's all going to be okay so that's what I'll do now it's the easy part done um, new disc on I've re copper slipped the uh, security screws there and there. <clears throat> A quick brush down with some carb cleaner, brake cleaner, sorry. Um, so now it's the main work, getting the slide pins and the pad carrier back together.
So that's that's moving nicely enough. Let's see if we can see. I'll show you what I mean by this technique. So put it in at an angle and then push it. You see how it's stopped? That's the point that you get. It should be when I put the camera on this, you should see the teeth. Yeah, see the teeth there? Might not be that obvious, but that's the teeth. So you adjust that up and down until there's no friction, but I think that's actually okay. So, back to the pad carrier and slide pins. Right, well, we're back to this again. So, the first thing I'm going to do is pull out these slide pins. See, that was only just done <laughs> last week and it doesn't feel for particularly fantastic. This one it is moving, but not to the extent you'd want it. So, just rotate that out. You'll see that one's smaller. And that was longer. I don't know what the difference is, but uh, both the same space. But anyway, I did actually lose the original one uh, last week. It just disappeared. I don't know where on earth it went. And this one fits. It works. So that's fine for now until I get a new set. But that will be part of the summer maintenance, I think. So I'm going to get <coughs> the wire brush. Um, that one there. I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to take the rubber boots out, get them all nicely cleaned up, and then I'm going to use. I've got a drill bit. I'll wrap a drill bit in some uh, cloth, and I'll clean out these holes. I'll use brake cleaner as well. So, anyway, you can see the state of it at the moment. Let's have a look at this in 10 or 15 minutes. Well, I've got, gone over this with the wire brush. I've still cleaned the, uh, the shims up, but uh, I've taken the majority of the corrosion off. I've been in there. Still looks like I could get something out of that. Uh, that one... I think that one looks a bit better. Probably needs something more abrasive for that one. Um, I'll see what I can do. Well, I've gone over that briefly with a wire brush. Looks better. I'll get that cleaned out a bit more in there. And uh, double check that the... Uh, the bellow or the, the grommet, whatever you call this thing, uh, fits on snugly to hopefully stop any water ingress. Well, that's this uh, relatively well cleaned up. That's the end that goes into the pad carrier, and this is the end that goes on here twist it so that's fitting on securely now <clears throat> certainly a lot better than it was now I need to make sure that goes here into the pad carrier I've cleaned them out as well as I can still a little bit of corrosion on there but I don't really want to abrade it too much in case there's play but with the grease, it should hopefully be okay. So I'll put some grease on these slide pins, put them in, see how they go. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll then put the, uh, the rubbers in and then fit the slide pads. Well, that's the rubbers uh, reinstalled. Just pinch them and then push them in, make sure they're okay. Rotate them if you want, just to make sure that uh, everything's seated properly. Now I'm going to put the uh, 
Now, which way is it? So that was the top. So that was the... This one was the bad pin. The bottom one. So you need to put the rubbers in first and then just kind of twist that. If I can do that one hand. Yeah, just twizzle it. Alright. So that looks... That doesn't look too bad. And then this one... Just kind of, it's really difficult doing this one-handed, <laughs> but uh, just slowly put it in, gloves in the way there, rotate it in, I would do this in uh, a tenth of the time if I was using both hands, but anyway that's it, it's in, and that grommet should come over it, yep, grommet's over it. And the grommets over it there. So right, that's that all fully reassembled, moving smoothly enough there. Moving smoothly enough there. It's hard to do with one hand holding the uh, phone. So the next thing I'm going to do is clean up these shims. Well, that's me reassembled everything. That's the pad carrier done. Slide pins cleaned up. I've just inserted the the pads. <coughs> Hopefully, that'll all slip over the disc, no problem. Um, so that's the next step. So I'm quite happy with that. I take the shims out, clean the shims up. I put copper grip, copper slip behind here to protect the surface. And I've put a little bit of copper slip on the pads and uh, reassembled. And, well, hopefully that's going to be fine until the summer anyway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a miracle. I have found the missing slide pin. It was actually, now don't ask me how this happened, it was underneath the centre stand for one of my motorcycles. So it's needing a bloody good clean up. But what I found was <coughs> the one that I used, the spare one I had was too long, which was fine when the pads were worn down, but not when the pads were new. So I'm going to clean this up with the trusty Aldi drill and get that greased up and uh, swap it out for this one here at the top I better put that back down onto there but yeah this one's gonna have to come out and uh, get replaced with the correct one can't believe that uh, somehow the gremlins took it and put it underneath Obviously, it's fallen out of my hand some, at some point, but I don't want to repeat that. Well, that's that slide pin cleaned up. Might not look wonderful, but compared to what it was, it's not too bad. I'll get it greased up and slipped in, madam. Well, that's that pin inserted. It's moving freely. Well, that's everything back together on this side. Um, so the two 14-ish bolts there and there on the caliper, they're tightened up. Um, I've still got to put this bolt in here, but that's fairly straightforward. Um, screws have been tightened there, so everything should be pretty much good to go apart from the cross member. Well, that's uh, all back to normal. 
you might notice I've put the bolt in a different direction. <coughs> I couldn't seem to get it to line up very easily. Uh, so anyway, I've put some copper slip on there. That'll get redone at some point in the summer. So, it seems to be turning smoothly enough. Next time I'm about a scrap yard, I'll see about getting the rubber grommet to cover that. I might just put a bit of grease over that, but I don't think anything will get in through the wheel. So I'll put a bit of copper grease on this surface and uh, get the wheel back on. Well, here I am on the other side, wheel under there. So hopefully this one's not nearly so bad because I did give this quite a decent clean up. So this one I'm going to be focusing mostly on changing the uh, the disc. Uh, everything else should be fine from the other day. And again, I'm going to give this thing a good uh, a good brake service um, probably at the end of the summer. But uh, as you can see, this one's definitely less corrosion involved. But anyway, I better get cracked on. It's now almost half past two. Well, that's this side off. <coughs> I've managed to break that part of the dust shield. Same uh, situation again. Uh, looks like the spring's on there. And down there, so that's not so bad. Um, I'll just need to clean off some of this crap and see about putting some. Yeah, clean off some of this crap, as I say, and get a bit of grease in there. <coughs> um, this one was quite hard to get this bolt out here for the, um, you know, inside there. It's quite stiff, stiff, but not too bad. This came off no problem at all. So, right, I'm just going to get this cleaned up, and then uh, I'll clean up the pad carrier a bit better. Uh, put the new disc on and refit it all. Well, I've taken the pad carrier off on this. I just gave it a brief going over before the MOT, but it definitely needs a good cleaning out underneath there. Uh, the shims are clean, but, uh, well, not so clean now that I've got dirt and dust all over them, but, uh, yeah, these... These had a brief going when they were in situ, but they need going over, and they need a good clean out in there. There and there. The slide pins are, well, somewhat gummed up. That one's definitely needing a good clean. So, get the wire brush, <coughs> this one again, onto these surfaces. Get that done and get all this cleaned out and then whiz back together. Well, everything is cleaned up. Um, pads and everything are done. Um, I'm just compressing the piston. I've put the old brake pad in. Put the end of the G clamp there. I've just turned it till it stops. <coughs> pads went in fine. Didn't need any uh, adjustments or anything. I think a lot of the time that you do need to adjust the pads, it's because of the build-up of corrosion underneath the shims. So I'll put a bit of uh, copper slip on there, and we'll get that back on, and uh, should be good to go. Well, there we are, that's that done. New discs and pads fitted corrosion removed where applicable and same at this side I'll need to pump up the uh, the brake pedal make sure everything's okay um, but yeah it seems okay from my brief check before I put everything back together but uh, if you have any questions uh, please uh, ask in the comments and if you feel so inclined uh, feel free to like and subscribe. 
Um, so I will be going the, going over this again at some point when it's better weather. Hopefully, maybe late summer. Um, I'll do a similar clean up on the front end, certainly. Um, and well, everything seems to be fine brake wise. I have got a little bonus job to do a couple of years ago. I was transporting wood internally and I split the, um, the door panel vinyl. So, before I fall and break my neck, I've got a replacement one with no rip. So that's going to get done. That's one of my next jobs, but that's not going to be high priority. And then the other one I've got when I brought the when I bought the car, there was a tiny little dent there. It's been there since time began. It's not it's not been a problem as far as I'm concerned, but go over here again. And I've got a spare one. So, next job, as I say, will likely be replacing that uh, weather strip and the door panel. So, anyway, hope you're all having a good day and uh, you're keeping yourselves occupied. Bye just now.